warm good evening to all the toastmasters and guests present here i am toastmaster pawan a member of pcs hyderabad maitri kohinoor park toastmasters club and currently serving as area f2 director on this occasion i welcome each and every one of you to be on toastmasters episode 5 a district 98 initiative well that being said whatever we do in toastmasters we align it to the mission statement of toastmasters international which says we empower individuals to become more effective communicators and leaders and also i would like to remind our district 98 mission which says we build a new clubs and support all clubs in achieving excellence for the smooth flow of meeting let me set a few ground rules first one whenever you are speaking please refrain yourself from speaking about sex religion and politics in a demeaning way rule number 2 please keep your video off for a better bandwidth rule number 3 please use the reaction button clap and thumbs up whenever you feel the appropriate rule number 4 use the chat option to give responses when the speaker ask any few question or let your opinion know so well today's episode is about influencing without authority which is pretty much relevant for me if you ask me why since my childhood i was observing people who are letting others do things only because with their authoritativeness in my school days i was observing it in my principal in my family i was observing it my from my uncle and of course once i joined a corporate i am observing it every single day but two, two years back when i joined tosh master people are saying that you will become a servant leader one day and you need to uh, influence people without authority that was the first time i struck upon this concept i wondered how how you can influence people without you or uh, authority we hardly see in these kind of things only in movies where a coach of a play or any uh, friend or a movie uh, actor influence the co actor without any authority so after least got to know about this topic given by our today's speaker i was pretty much excited to about more about it well i think you are all with me uh, joining uh, today's meeting for the same purpose i guess thank you for all well uh, to take things from forward from here we have a don in this meeting who is a barbarian from north a traveler and an explorer from the land of five rivers a person who showed his excellence not only in traditional manual but also in the pathways he completed four full parts and those are dynamic leadership innovative planning strategic relations and persuasive influence so my dear audience yeah. please give a virtual round of applause for division d director our moderator for today's meeting tosh master vikram over to you vikram thank you tosh master pavan a very good evening and a warm welcome to each and every one of you role players participants and our distinguished guests that we have today first of all thank you beyond toast masters thank you for taking your time i know it's a weekend and i know a lot of people are looking at the nice fine weather outside their house at least i am in pune and wondering oh my god should i go play in the rain should i become like a little kid all over again and go running should i do this should i do that but then i realized something toast masters has an awesome session planned today beyond toast masters this community has given so much to us and it's still giving and i appreciate the fact that there are people in different parts of the world in different parts of india and who knows even abroad who have come together today to hold a session so a lazy guy like me decided i know i'm a barbarian and god knows i look the path also so i decided not to share for you guys especially since my intro reads like that but i decided that today we are going to have a very special session and the gentleman who's going to give the session now to introduce him t chandel kumar or ck as he is well known to his friends and colleagues he is a civil engineer by training and a trainer by choice he has over two decades over 20 years of sales and marketing exposure after which he switched over to facilitation guided by his mentor dr dvr shadri a renowned faculty at imb and now with isb hyderabad he is trained at the harvard law school on teaching negotiations in organizations and believe me this is a skill we need to really learn in today's world negotiation we all seen the old fashion world where a lot of things depended on the marks you got and what you did in today's world corporate world what was the past doesn't carry forward 
you have to keep negotiating whether it's your job whether it's your personal life whether it's something else in life we need to keep dealing and today's world demands negotiation so this gentleman is going to take us a bit down that path ck was trained under dr robert caldini who's a world renowned guru of influence and persuasion based in phoenix arizona that's also phoenix arizona where my american counterparts work so after today's training i'm going to tell my american counterparts okay i learned from someone who learned from dr caldini so i know what you guys are up to also believe me i'm also going to learn now ck is a guest faculty at iim bangalore since 2005 at various management development programs teaching very important negotiation skills managerial communication and influencing skills he is a guest faculty at iim ahmedabad iim indore iim udaipur and iim shillong ck's clients are spread across usa europe latin america uae bahrain oman saudi arabia kuwait singapore and malaysia practically you go to any continent ck has been there done that and taught them something so we are also going to learn along with them ck is an acclaimed public speaker having spoken in five tedx events in india and dubai that's an amazing achievement he is an avid toastmaster and has sponsored more than 10 toastmaster clubs in india so ladies and gentlemen fellow toastmasters and guests please help me in giving a warm applause and a warm welcome to dr chandel kumar distinguished toastmasters over to you sir thank you thank you so much vikram <clears throat> am i audible first thing is am i audible or do i need to pump up the volume fine okay great thank you so much uh, for that uh, flawless introduction in fact i am not going to say this just because you said some nice things about me i logged into this session half an hour earlier just to get to see how the uh, things are moving and uh, vikram was the moderator and you know for 5 to 10 minutes everything was quiet and uh, nobody was interacting if i were a third participant anonymous participant i might have said uh, how come this is uh, so unlively vikram without any prompting he started having a nice chat with all the participants and said why don't you guys introduce yourselves and let's get to know more and he set the tone for a very healthy interaction this is something that influencers must learn i was about to say this much later but i was greatly impressed by the way you handled the crowd your informal nature and uh, this is something i always advocate so once again thank you vikram influence without authority i'm sure this is a subject as uh, kk rightly mentioned has been intriguing for quite a lot because ironically ironically the best way to exert influence is to have authority you either have a title or you have power or you have money these are the common things by which you can exert influence and many people say it is true also but today increasingly in the world of millennials and zoomers the command and control does not work you need to be able to juggle with the constituents so before i get into the nitty gritty of influence i have a question for you please use the mentimeter which is likely to come up in a short while and please give me your answers to this question what is the difference between persuasion and influence in your own thought it could be a word it could be an example it could be anything what in your opinion is the difference between persuasion and influence so can i request cyril to put up the mentimeter screen and please follow the directions but i think there's a clear direction on how to use this mentimeter so as you respond i think the responses will start appearing and then we can have a small discussion
Persuasion is with authority and influence is by initiative to inspire others. Vanita V, I think, mentioned this, okay. <clears throat> Persuasion, in my opinion, is not always with authority. But anyway, I'm just uh, thinking all the responses that come. Some people are doodling. I don't know what that means. But anyway, I think uh, the person is trying to creatively express what she or he means by influence. Yes, looking for your persuasion can be negative or positive. It's a bit forcefulness. Influence is positive. It is seamless. Well, I have a slight difference, but anyway. Persuasion is me asking my club president to attend meeting. Influence is my DVD asking or division director asking me to attend meeting. Well, uh, DVD, I mean, division director asking could be a use of authority, right? Not necessarily influence. <clears throat> okay. Uh, persuasion is an active process. Influence is a passive process. I want to know who said this. Persuasion is an active process. Influence is a passive process. Persuasion can be forceful, but yeah. Who said this? They are Himanshu. Himanshu. Okay, great. Uh, doesn't mean agreement. Influence does mean agreement. Watching IPL influences attending beyond Toastmasters. Persuasion is watching IPL. Okay. Influence with force, influence is at will. Persuasion is someone asking me to attend a meeting and influence is me joining a meeting and others getting motivated to join this. Okay, great. Excellent. So can we have the Mentimeter off? Okay. Well, in a very broad sense, let me tell you a simple example. I hope all of us can relate to this. I picked up a good habit from a friend of mine. That is, whenever I call someone on a cell phone, the first thing I say is, is this a good time to talk? Because you may be driving, you may be in a meeting. I've not told this to my son or my wife. My son is an IT professional based in Bangalore. And one day I heard him talking to his friend and he was saying, hey, dude, is it a good time to talk? I was so happy. He said, no, I've just watched you and I thought it's a good habit. So internally, I felt so happy that I had a very positive influence on my son without even uttering a word that you should be doing this. While I was gloating over, I was also aware that my son is likely to pick up actions of mine which are not necessarily positive. For example, suppose I tell my son, speak the truth always, satyam vada. And then the phone rings and I tell him, if it's for me, tell him that I'm not at home. Now, what do you think he's going to believe, my action or my words? So that's why I wanted to counter someone who said, Influence can be only positive, where well, it can be negative also. But the crux of the definition is, as many of you have rightly said, for persuading someone, I need to be active. I have to use certain channels, email, telephone, conference call, or even face-to-face -face negotiation. But influencing, even without uttering a word, I can influence people. So to put it in a very simple manner, we can call persuasion is more direct and influence is indirect because even without your knowledge, you are sending some signals to others, especially if you are in the managerial role or a leadership role, whether it's Toastmasters or the corporate, that's why they say uh, leadership by example is much more important than coming out with a lot of vision and mission statements and you not setting an example. Or you think of whom, how do you get influenced? It's only because of watching someone do and not necessarily because they say something. Now, here's one more question to see if you have understood the concept very clearly. Now, I'm going to make a statement now. Now, all of you will listen to this and tell me, simply put it on the chat window, whether this is persuasion or influence. A young, attractive girl going for regular walks in the morning 
can improve the health of at least 10 young men? Persuasion or influence? Quick, on the chat window. Influence, influence. Excellent, excellent. Okay, I think uh, Manideep, the session is over because all of you understood this perfectly. Yes, exactly, it is influence. So even without doing anything, I'm able to extend my influence. So let's get into the nitty gritty because I'm just going to leave you with two or three factors at most. What if I don't have that status? What if I don't have authority? What is the best way to increase my influence? The first thing is expertise. It's not merely having expertise, but how you use your expertise. That is important because you must have seen there may be team members who may not have great authority, but they make a distinct mark in the circle and very frequently people tell me that the clients ask only for that particular member because she is able to solve problems because of her expertise. But the point in today's competitive world is it's not just enough to have expertise. How well are you able to use them? I'll give you a simple example. Take a good look at this picture. <clears throat> Charlie's Crafty Kitchen. These are two young uh, sisters. One of them is very fond of baking cakes and she's got some amazing recipes. So what she did, she started a YouTube channel just to tell people about the various types of cakes that she bakes in an interesting manner. And her sister also helps her with this just to get some pocket money and just guess how much they make. Any guesses before I put up? Approximately. This is exactly how much they make per month. $130,000 per month. So do they have great status? Do they have great connections? No, but they made use of their talent and to look at uh, one more example. I'm sure many of you know about this. Just take a good look at this. Heba's Kitchen, I'm sure. A housewife who was who had relocated to Australia because her husband had got a transfer, didn't know what to do in the spare time. And she started this channel. And now the entire family collaborates with massive viewership. And I think they have simply come out very well. So it is not just mere expertise. How well you're able to use your expertise is very, very important. This is something that I've learned by watching people who do ordinary things in a different manner. When I go for my blood sugar checkup, you know, I have to get it checked once before breakfast and once after breakfast. 90% of the time, the technicians, they start poking and then they start searching for the veins. It's quite painful. It's a very small needle, but it's very painful. But last time when I went, there was a lady who first cleaned up, tapped, she located the vein and then inserted the needle. And it was such a smooth, such a smooth experience. I almost shouted once more. That is what is expertise. And it is not necessary that the same person will come post breakfast. But can you blame me for asking for the same person? So that's what expertise does. Can you do your job well? And do you know how to project it well in these days of social media is something that you will have to follow if you have to influence without any great authority. The second, and this is, I feel, most important in today's uh, commercial world, is empathy. Now, empathy is a word that you must have heard in umpteen forums. But today, 
Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft, he says, I want all the 10th, 20th, uh, whatever the numbers of uh, employees of Microsoft to develop a sense of empathy. Do you know the pain points of your customer? Do you know how your other person feels? And similarly in Toastmasters, you may be a gifted speaker, but do you know how the average member feels? What, what does she or he require? Now, if you don't understand that, if you don't have a feeling, they say it's no point in getting into a commune or community. And the moment you show empathy, your influence is boundless. One more example, I'll just show you this picture. Take a look at this good uh, picture. I'll tell you the brief background. The lady that you see in the first half is called Kamalamma. She is a retired government servant subsisting on a monthly pension of 600 rupees. Now the Rotary Club of Mysore Heritage was distributing food packets in these COVID times because obviously many people were left homeless and uh, rudderless. And Kamalama came hesitatingly to one of the organizers. And obviously the Rotarian thought that she was expecting some money. I mean, the food packet. She immediately went back and said, no, I'm not, uh, I, I didn't come here for food. And she extended that 500 rupee note and said, this is my simple contribution for your noble effort because I've seen you guys doing some tremendous work. And the Rotarian said, we were all shocked. We said, no, ma'am, we can't uh, accept this. But she pleaded and then they accepted this for, her, for their venture. And Satish Acharya is a very famous cartoonist. And look at the tribute he paid. Look at all the most famous names. They have tremendous authorities, tremendous power. But he put her on the pedestal and says, her contribution of 500 out of 600 is something she, she, it shows that the kind of understanding and the empathy she has for her fellow citizens. Today, let me tell you, she's become a household name in Karnataka and wherever this message has been spread across. Similarly, I think it is in Hyderabad or Telangana, a distant district. Do you remember a laborer, a lady, woman laborer, bought three ice creams for the constables because they were all sweating in the rain doing their duty. And this got the attention of the DGP of uh, Andhra Pradesh or Telangana. Forgive me if I'm not, uh, if I don't have the right state. And he's from Manipur. And there was a nice video doing the rounds. In his charming Telugu, he says, I make a dandam petali. I want to, you know, salute you for the remarkable work that you did in making our people do what their duty. This is what is empathy. But I was left with this a tremendous life-changing experience for me. In December 2018, I was invited as the chief, I mean, speaker, keynote speaker at the Rotary District Conference in Mangalore, December 2018. And uh, I was put up in a hotel called Goldfinch Hotel. Nine o'clock, the meeting was supposed to start. And 8.30, I find that the button on my jacket was almost snapping out. I rushed down to the front office and the girl said, what happened? I said, uh, sorry, uh, this is the case. I have a meeting at nine and see what happens. She said, don't worry. She called uh, housekeeping. Apparently the housekeeping guy was not interested in coming down just for the button. She said, I will get it myself. She got the thread and the needle and she started stitching. I could hear her male colleague you know, chastisizer. She said, hey, why are you doing all this? This is not our job. And he was right. They were from the front office. And you know what she did? She simply looked up and said, sir has a meeting at nine. I got the jacket. I thanked her and asked her name. And here was the surprise for me. She said, Shraddha. For those of you who don't know, Shraddha means dedication. With a smile, I said, I want to congratulate your parents for naming you aptly. And I went to the conference. You know what the topic was? Influence without authority. 
I had prepared a lot of text, but can you blame me for junking all that and starting with Shraddha's example? Needless to add, that received one of the loudest applauses ever. Now, I stayed till the evening and then rushed to the airport directly because I, was, I had uh, some other engagement. I didn't go back to the hotel. Last year, I went back to Mangalore and checked into the same hotel. Shraddha came rushing to me and said, Sir, I've been trying to reach you ever since you told my name. So many Rotarians have been coming up and congratulating me. Not only that, I was awarded the best employee of the month. Not only that, my family and I were sent on a one week all expenses paid holiday to a resort in Goa. Thank you so much. I said, I'm not at all surprised. You deserve much more. I wished her and went out. Now, let me tell you, till today, those words, sir has a meeting at nine, are resonating within me. So the lesson for all of us is, do you understand the pain point of your colleagues, your maybe toastmaster, maybe your superior, maybe your subordinate or your client? And if you act with a bit of a concern, I'm telling you, you will leave a mark and a distinct footprint on becoming more influential. To go to the next quality, I don't have much, but uh, I thought I should tell you this. This is from a small roadside eatery in Nepal. Look at his heart. I'm sure he's not some millionaire or something, but he says, if you're tourist stuck in, uh, stuck in Nepal, here you can find free lunch and dinner if you have no money at all. Please welcome. And if you can afford, please pay me 100. Wow, what a, what a thought from maybe a man of humble origins. And this owner has also become very famous on social media and people have simply responded in cash and kind, although he refused to accept uh, for his heart. Now, these, this is what influence is made of because we are running a rat race. We are only focused about I, me and myself. The moment you show some concern, take the example of Toastmasters. All that I do in Toastmasters is Whenever a speaker speaks, icebreaker or a higher projects, especially icebreakers, I put aside all my gadgets. I just look at the speaker and simply nod my head and smile a prop. That's all I do because I thought that's the least respect you can pay to a speaker. And you won't believe the kind of response that I've had. I frequently, I've been accosted by Unknown Toastmasters who say, sir, you may not remember me. You came to our club as a guest and you left halfway. That's why I couldn't meet you. And I was hesitating. I thought I'll not be able to complete my icebreaker. But every time I saw you, you were giving me appropriate signals, smiling. And that gave me the confidence. And to tell you, sir, today I'm a participant in the District International Speech Contest. Tell me something. What else do you need when you can create such a great impact with just a very, very small uh, gesture that is giving respect to the other person? And other part, when, I, when you say uh, no authority, this is uh, one thing I found is important. I'm sorry. Just give me a moment. Networking. When I don't have status, when I'm not adequately qualified, the best thing that will help you to gain access to important people or even get your ideas across is effective networking. And I don't mean multi-level marketing, don't mistake me but the ability to connect with people who are not necessarily similar to you. And this can widen the impact, especially when the district was, when you, especially Zoom has made it possible that you start linking with Toastmasters across borders and you see the benefit it is giving. Let's say you have a project in your club and you don't have a suitable evaluator. All you need to do is 
sign up for the official toastmasters international page on facebook and request and seasoned toastmasters from across the globe are willing to come and evaluate you or conduct a table topic session or give a project speech or do an educational session now this is the power of networking and thereby you increase your influence now here is a question for you can everybody be influenced can you quickly send me your responses on the chat window can everybody be influenced this is my question onkar anand anand ravi so many people say yes yes rituparna says no manideep says no many people say yes okay now i'm not going to give you an answer don't worry but i have will rogers who gives the answer there is nothing you can do about the third category their minds are so blocked that they will not listen to facts also don't worry about them don't break your head and say how come i am not able to make a mark no it is not possible look at the people who are willing to be influenced or who are willing to at least listen to you so don't worry about the third category some people are so hardwired they will not listen to anybody so use this so to conclude when i don't have authority when i don't have a title one of the best things to do is make sure you have expertise and use the expertise well project it well maybe start a youtube channel or social media make sure it is appropriately handled or linkedin profile make your views heard the second is empathy small little acts of helping a colleague because he or she is not able to do the work willingly going and doing something and third of course effective networking now some of you may have a doubt you know i come out with wild wacky ideas do you think the people will take me seriously and here is one last a uh, picture that i want to show you which will give you tremendous which should give you tremendous confidence there's an excellent book by chris brogan which says the freaks shall inherit the earth so if you consider yourself an outlandish kid coming out with crazy ideas you are the guys who are going to dominate this entire um, millennium or this uh, this entire uh, future which is in front of us so the crazy of the ideas you are likely to meet people who will approve of you so friends uh, it is not about exercising control it is not about shouting out orders it is about the way you mix with people and the way you have uh, clarity in your ideas that is much more important because i see one nice face on the screen i must tell you when hyderabad toastmasters was being chartered everybody was racing uh, to see that it is the first club to be chartered but the people who were behind the club said no we'll take our time we want to establish a base and only then start so which means you need to have patience you have to believe yourself and establish credibility expertise empathy and networking there ends the formal part of my talk and uh, i thought it's better that we have a dialogue answer some specific questions so that it becomes much more informative and it becomes more of a dialogue rather than speaking from a pedestal so please shoot your questions and on the topic and i'll be happy to answer whatever i can thank you up to over to you vikram thank you sir okay ladies and gentlemen this was something i really am glad i attended today i am glad i didn't go like a barbarian in the rain and i'm really glad and thankful that i attended this session i mean expertise empathy these sound like such simple words which a lot of us have done in our life but understand what it meant he spoke about the old lady who gave 500 order for 600 a drop in the bucket it would not even make a difference to a charity but 
the emotions that were involved, the thought. Because of what she did, millions of other people are influenced and would go ahead and give a substantially larger amount because they would look into their hearts and see she gives so much out of so little that she has. And for us, we can give a lot more. That is where the influence comes in. He spoke about the lady at the hotel. A small gesture from her side, but what a difference it made for him. And because it made a difference for him, Sir today spoke about it and a lot more people are aware of that, that small little actions in a life can have repercussions down the line. I mean, uh, one of the things I remember about this is that butterfly effect. A butterfly fluttering its wings somewhere in South America can have a storm somewhere and you never know. Someone does something good to you one day in your life, you repeat it down the line for strangers and you set up a pattern. Thank you, sir. These are some things I will definitely remember and I'm sure a lot of us will. Today's session brought out things that we will inculcate and who knows that empathy part Toastmaster lives on that. Now you're right. When we go back to our clubs, we go back to our areas, division, district. We just might think a little bit more when we're trying to say push someone or maybe trying to influence someone join. Maybe that person may have certain financial problems, may have certain time constraints. We might be a bit more understanding. Maybe someone after the speech slot, maybe something in life. So thank you. We go into that. Now, there were some questions that had come to us a little previously, which we would definitely like to go ahead and discuss. So yes, all of you can sure. start shooting some questions onto the chat. So Pankaj Mishra had a question. What yeah. ensures influential place in one's life? Is it discipline or destiny? Your view, sir. Oh. Discipline or devotion, right? Discipline or destiny. You can take devotion destiny. also. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I would say to be practical, it's a combination of discipline and destiny. Because you can be the most disciplined person in life, but if destiny makes it otherwise, uh, you have no uh, chance of overcoming that. Now, I can give you many examples, but uh, don't take this in the religious aspect or something. But destiny is something, what I feel is something that has already been written, but that does not stop you or should not stop you from doing certain things. Isn't it a fact that we, we do a lot of things with the discipline, but you find that entirely different things are taking place. Take the COVID-19, for example, people who have taken utmost care with the best of medical comfort have collapsed. And people who are roaming around, that's what my wife said, look at the vegetable wala, the sabzi wala, who's sitting on the roadside every day. Uh, you mean to say they have got uh, tremendous immune? So where, where where do you uh, draw a line? This is my answer. I don't think I've given you an answer, but this is the fact. Yeah. It's fake, I would say. Uh, another gentleman, Box San Sin, had a question. Difference yeah. between influence, inspire, and persuade. I know we covered yeah. this in your thing. But Correct. Between... Yeah, we covered this uh, difference between influence and persuade. What is the other word? Inspire. Inspire, yeah. Uh, but because... Uh, what happened because of my <clears throat> acting and you know asking my friend is it a good time to talk i have not only influenced i have inspired my son to follow some good practice so leaders do that you might have never met mahatma gandhi in life or martin luther king in life but we get inspired by their speeches so when you have a positive influence i think you start inspiring also Ooh, thanks uh, pankaj mishra had a second question what ensures influential yeah. place in one's life? Okay, sorry, that came back again. Uh, Pankasha, sorry. What's the most crucial skill in today's time? The most crucial skill. Most crucial skill, if you yeah. ask me, I will say it is survival. <laughs> because you <laughs> never know when your turn is going to come. Uh, but once again, let me tell you empathy. And my, I feel very strongly, whether it is corporate circle, personal circle is, uh, do you care for others? We have enough people, enough biscuits who are making a lot of money, who will teach you how to be successful in life. But uh, the I, me, myself is narrowing our concern. So please look around and be a bit courteous. I think that is the important skill we need, especially in these trying times. Cool. And uh, Vasudha Lal had a question. What is the key ingredient for being an influencer? Uh, like I told you, 
first thing is make sure you have good expertise so that people notice you number one and learn to showcase your expertise so that people know what you're capable of second of course the oft repeated word called empathy and be a good networker because today you know man is an island you can't do things on your own so you need appropriate places the right kind of people in fact since most of your corporate members having sound connections on linkedin is not a great thing how well you are able to mix and gather and also give back is what i would say are the three crucial skills in today's uh, world and uh, we have a question now how to uh, network in the right way how to network in the Part right way that's a i think uh, right yeah this is something that uh, people ask because the networking there is a very thin line of difference between networking and manipulation the moment somebody comes and asks uh, trying to build up friendship with you you immediately start thinking why is she doing this why why is he doing that are they expecting something in return for me so to network ethically is something that we all need to learn but i would suggest you just go and attend a meeting called bni business networking international no i'm not asking you to become members nor am i a member but their motto is very interesting you know what their motto is givers gainers they don't talk about uh, looking at somebody else what can i get from the other person but it's always about what can you contribute to the others and then you will see that your influence goes automatically so this would be the right way to network and not look at every uh, contact as someone that you can milk but we must be able to share and also get equally from them yeah givers gainers mm -hmm. would be my one line answer okay vivek has a question does yeah. language play a role in influence language not necessarily i don't think so it there are so many people right in the corporate sector i can tell you who have reached great heights and who have become master influencers without the language but if your question is let us say i'm interacting with a multicultural audience it's a good idea to speak their language if you're talking from that perspective yes because everyone likes to receive messages in their own language if you take the trouble to talk just uh, try to watch the video of the dgp who's actually from tripura of telangana and you know he speaks such uh, charming language it was so endearing so to that extent if you speak the language of the audience yes i do say yes but is that the only criteria not necessary you can uh, attract people or influence people by your deeds and not necessarily with your verbal dazzle cool uh but as i have a question what is the difference yeah. between motivation and influence Mot okay in both the cases uh, i have a simple answer motivation cannot be taught it can be only caught so influencing also if your mind is not open you will never be able to learn from anybody but you must be having the open mind to say that somebody else may have a better idea in fact i remember a chinese uh, zen master buddhist zen master who says in the beginner's mind there are many possibilities in the expert's mind there are few so the moment you have an open mind and say what can i learn from this person you can even learn from an ice breaker although you might have been a double or triple dtm but if you enter as an expert let me tell you it will be closed have an open mind have a learning mind yeah cool tejal khatri has a question yeah. what are the ways to develop survival skills what are the ways to develop survival, survival skills? skills yeah uh, i assume she means in the influence world not in the barbarian yeah. world otherwise i would have told her that but yes <laughs> your world is i know i know uh, i think uh, two things one is focus on your performance in terms of the workplace the second is the health part of it i am not just talking about the physical health 
how easy are you to work with how likable are you do you take things too seriously the moment people start liking you you will find that you will automatically have a small circle who are willing to emulate you so develop expertise so that people respect you develop the trustworthiness or do what you say keep what you your promises okay the most important suggestion that i have is please don't play games with people i see many people using people contacts like a pack of cards and when the utility values over they simply throw the moment you do that i think that negates the principle of influencing so if you are able to understand that everybody needs somebody uh, you will not uh, you will you will improve your influencing automatically thank you pankaj mishra has a question now this is very corporate related in a corporate yeah. world is observed that self centered people with no empathy at all yeah yeah climbing the company ladder with success yes any reason for that correct now for a long long time self centered people were the you know superstars or these were the guys who got the money for the company and as pankaj rightly said the companies used to encourage such people but i worked with a lot of corporates and i can tell you without any hesitation that in the past 5 to 10 years you know the thinking of the management has changed you may be a superstar god bless you however if you are not able to align with your team and if you are not able to carry the team along with you we'd rather sacrifice you than you know promote you and this is happening may not be very evident but it is happening in a systematic manner so my friend if you see someone getting undue importance don't worry please remember those people also have their appraisals and no company would want to lose a talented bunch of youngsters or teammates just because there is one person who's hogging all the credit so Ooh. yeah okay ajit dembele has a question now this is more toastmaster oriented he said yeah. in our movement yeah. we are used to evangelizing the right causes toastmasters yeah. don't seem to be doing it enough yeah. can a cause be a credible initiative from the district in your opinion something um, more than so, i'm sorry i didn't get that question right can you please repeat it yeah, i'm so, sorry uh, ajit dembele mentioned our movement must be used to evangelize the right causes that is toastmasters So yeah. Toastmasters don't seem to be doing it enough. So yeah. can a cause be a credible initiative from the district? Should there be something more that we as Toastmasters can be doing to influence things in life? Well, I think uh, it takes time, uh, Ajit. If it is Ajit Dembla who's asked this question, uh, mm-hmm. please remember when we started this uh, building up fifteen, eighteen years ago. uh we needed people to get committed to this movement there are many people who come and take this as a hobby and then push off but the more and more people who start giving uh you know ex- okay i'll give you one corporate example why is toastmaster so successful in infosys continuously and in tcs because these two i have some personal knowledge i was there when infosys uh, started their first uh, toastmasters club in bangalore i was a part of the team i went uh, just as a curious onlooker right from the ceo themselves they give a lot of importance and tcs reimburses your uh, fees if you achieve a certain status so when the encouragement comes from the top level itself you you have a tremendous sense of the evangelization happens and please remember these two are very large companies and they are spreading a lot perhaps more some of the celebrities once they come and they start writing about the benefits that they've gained i think only then uh, this will spread much faster but right now i agree with uh, uh, ajit that it is still a best kept secret it has not mm-hmm. developed but i think it it is going to take some time just imagine the kind of districts that we have developed take your uh, hyderabad a uh, one club see how much they've uh, you know developed Thank you, sir. Ritu Panna Bhamik has a question. Yeah. yeah. How can an introvert network more? 
very important if you're an introvert how can you in network fact, more yes yes in fact introverts are the easiest persons to start networking first thing is you need to get that bias out of your mind okay i'll give a simple suggestion for introverts introverts can start their networking in what we call as self similarity principle or the proximity principle let me not jargonize this what i mean by self similarity is introverts should start linking up with people who have similar interests because they rarely want to step out of their comfort zone because immediately they'll be questioned immediately they will not be listened to so if i am an rd burman kishor kumar lata mangeshkar fan i should get into that circle because the moment you get into the mohammed rafi group they will start questioning you and say this is nothing so what the one benefit is people will start respecting you people will not defy you but that will give you some confidence not bad i am also being there. the second thing is proximity in the workplace the same floor same department or uh, same project the more and more you start becoming friendly you have okay uh, sorry to uh, go back what is the first uh, what do you call barrier faced by introverts how do i begin a conversation what do i say after i say hello this seems to be what uh, this is what barriers so uh, this uh, somehow prevents people so start with people who are closer to you and start with people who are like you develop this and then get into <clears throat> forums like toastmasters and because you are a toastmaster start taking up positions you know like the uh, excom committee start taking part in area contests or in a zoom event like this volunteer to become an assignee or a role player you will necessarily have to interact with people who are not and they will make you comfortable and pray that you must have someone like vikram sikha who will make you very uh, comfortable you know you know the way he made people comfortable today it was so endearing hey look here guys i may look like a barbarian but i'm not i'm so friendly he made everybody easy and people start responding i saw this happening in front that's that's my answer especially because introverts find it very difficult to get into networking that's a very valid question yeah a question from uh, ashish sinha to influence yeah. how and when should we communicate in a team just being a listener in a team does it help uh maybe this is too generic a question but let me say first of all listening helps because you understand what is happening most of the time in teams even let's say somebody comes to you with an emotional problem even before the person has completed you assume that you know what the problem is and you start dishing out solutions and that frustrates them and they'll say come on yaar first of all listen to me understand what's my problem and for all of you i'd like to give the classic example of what is practiced in bhagavad gita no religion please don't mistake me to be uh, advocating some religion bhagavad gita in my opinion is actually a lesson on mentoring i hope all of you will agree uh, arjuna says i can't fight and krishna says i'm going to mentor you there are 18 chapters in the bhagavad gita and in the entire first chapter it is only arjuna uvacha arjuna uvacha arjuna uvacha arjuna says arjuna says arjuna says lord krishna does not interrupt even once in the second chapter verse 4 for the first time you will hear bhagwan uvacha what does it mean let me first of all understand what are the uh, trials and tribulations that you have faced ask even the silliest of he knows that arjuna is making some silly questions but he listens patiently so after you listen then you can start what is called as tarka the same thing adi shankara did at the age of 32 he managed to defeat mm. a very acclaimed scholar like mandana mishra only by active listening and asking questions so my my reply would be first of all understand you don't have to accept but understand what they're going through and then act yes okay, we have got a lot more questions pending but i'll just end with one last question sure sure because this one looked a little relevant and it had the right sort of words also uh, yeah. this is from rijal rijal sorry yeah. rijal. can empathy help to deal with close minded people how yeah. can you empathize with a close minded person something very relevant in today's world yes yes my 
initial temptation is to give you that answer of will rogers forget it don't bother but and uh, please remember be careful about the word empathy because many people have told me when i start empathizing people take me for granted i they take advantage of my seemingly goodness so there is a very thin line of difference between empathy and assertiveness okay what do i do with close minded people so first of all you need to have a dialogue i'm just telling you steps which have been uh, uh, helpful before take them out on an informal setting nothing extravagant maybe a barista or a nice coffee place that you have in hyderabad or wherever have an informal discussion about what exactly is bothering the other person it could be that he wants he or she wants to transfer to uh, kolkata because of their aged parents and uh, they are not getting a release from the project it is nothing to do with the work now once you probe in a friendly manner and get what is the real concern then people will open up but this is not uh, maggie noodles we won't have it in 2 minutes it takes time but dialogue time to get is the only thing you can do if nothing happens after this then i think you just have to say uh, ask uh, seek the blessings of the lord thank you sir and thank you to all of you who given your questions i'm sorry there are too many questions we can't go through all of them there are time limitations but what we like to do right now is go ahead and take a group photograph before yeah. i hand it over to for the vote of thanks so i'll request each and every and, one uh, of you sorry vikram yes. just a minute if you feel there are many other questions which have not been addressed so far i request some of them are repeated repetition i was picking out the questions which were yeah, in yeah. different no, no, context yeah. in case there are any questions which have not been answered i'll be happy to write a blog giving my answers to these questions in case if you feel there are unique questions yeah so uh, all of you please go ahead and put on your cameras your videos please uh, zoom master please confirm if everyone is on and go ahead and take your snaps sir is any pose that you like which you like to do which we can copy and imitate Hey, no, yeah, I am. Uh, I am. Sir, you are influencer. So you are influencing uh, us. So you can do V sign. You can do V, sir. V seems like a very really nice alphabet. You are the lively guy. Okay, okay, okay. It sounds nice, you know. Yeah. Any coincidence to my first alphabet? My name is purely coincidental. <laughs> yes, I believe you. <laughs> They made the sign way before I was born, so it's not my fault. definitely hey nice to see you arvind yeah zoom master just confirm if everyone everything is done yes everyone had turned on their video cool thank you you've taken the snapshots yeah cool thank you so much well i'll now like to hand it over to a fine gentleman now you may know him as different titles because he is a toast master whom i respect a lot and i have dealt with him when i was a club president or a club excom he was my area director later on he became a division and i have dealt with him throughout for quite a few years in district 98 i like to introduce hand it over now for the vote of thanks to himanshu inamdar himanshu is an eternally curious soul who if and when he gets time outside of toast masters commitments works in content marketing and editing A Toastmaster since 2016, he has served multiple leadership roles at the club level, has assisted clubs as a sponsor, mentor, and coach, having served as area director, division director in previous leadership roles. He is currently serving as the district administration manager. So, with a big round of applause, and before we finish, I would first of all like to welcome, ask all of you to go ahead and give a big round of applause to Sir Chintil Kumar. Thank you, sir. for the questions also answering them and now ladies and gentlemen i like to welcome and introduce himanshu iramdar over to you himanshu thank you so much vikram good evening everyone my apologies i might not be able to start my video i have been struggling with a storm here bad internet connectivity have but uh, distinguished host master chendel session has really kept me and i'm sure all of us hooked on Uh, thank you so much distinguished host master chendel for a wonderful session today and i really liked how engaging you have made it for all of us to you and vikram both of you together really played a huge role in ensuring that all of us were really active today and now I, before we end today's session we would like to 
thank all the people who made this possible. So we would like to hand over some certificates of appreciation for all of these members. Can you move on to the next slide, please? Thank you. So first to Meghna for playing the role of Zoom master in our fifth episode of Beyond Toastmasters. Thank you so much, Meghna. The second Zoom master, Bhavna. The timers for today, Sri Charan. Ujwala. Thank you guys, thank you so much. Thank you so much. To area director, Pavan Kumar for his opening address in the session. Thank you so much, Pavan. And to Vikram for his address, as well as being the moderator for this session and keeping this lively throughout. Thank you so much, Vikram. All right. Thank you so much. Since we are almost at the end of our time, I won't keep this very long. Yes, and most importantly, we haven't thanked our speaker who has spent his valuable time here today for us and sharing something for us to learn about how to influence without authority. Thank you so much, Distinguished Toastmaster Jendil, for being here with all of us today. Thank you. Thank Let's you have so a much. Big round of applause for him. Thank you. Thank you. Vikram, back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Toastma Distinguished Toastmaster Himanshu Namdar. Well, all good things must come to an end. I know it's been a short power pack one hour, and thank you, sir. Really appreciate that. Empathy, expertise, networking, things that we've heard of. But today, when we go back and we sleep about it, ruminate about it, and Monday morning when we start our bright and early life, whether we're going to start it as students, as company people, corporate people, or as self-employed entrepreneurs, we're going to remember this. Short, powerful little messages. Things influence us every day. Maybe next time I start doing something in life, I'm going to start wondering, am I doing this because someone did something and I liked it and I copied it? That was the influence that came down to us. Thank you for the session, sir. And for the closing, I'd like to go ahead and hand it over to Sergeant Arms, Toastmaster Pavan. Over to you, Pavan. Thank you so much, Vikram. What an amazing session it is, right? I was totally inspired and totally influenced by Chandil Kumar, sir, with your amazing session. When you ask me, my favorite words are being empathetic and that word, my favorite words are ethical network. I really like those words and I hope we are all uh, interested in your uh, session and will definitely implement on your things. Thank you so much, sir. So, uh, I, as you can see, after uh, after finishing your uh, session, I can see all the chart is flooded with uh, appreciation messages. Thank you so much, all the audience, for uh, spending one hour of your time in this lazy Saturday evening. Thank you so much. Can you all please share your feedback? Uh, I'm just sharing a link in the chat box. Please provide your valuable feedback over here. So with that being said, uh, I formally close this meeting. Thank you so much. Thank you. All your feedback is much more valuable.